A good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Asad Lalji. Welcome to yet another live session of Avid Online. And a warm welcome to those who are joining us for the first time. Please refer to the chat box for more information on Avid Learning and our partners for this evening's discussion. With the global pandemic, much like the world around us, we took a digital leap and began our online campaign, Avid Online, on the 1st of April, 2020. In this almost two years online journey, we've curated and presented over 330 programs. Despite the unprecedented challenges brought by the global pandemic, we've managed to stay positive, relevant, engaged and engaging. And as the world opens up, we continue to present the best of the arts and culture, build and maintain connections with the creative community, and most importantly, facilitate learning and dialogue, staying true to our mantra, as always, that learning never stops. With that, I welcome you to today's exciting session, the Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Vastu Sangralaya, Kala Ghoda Association, and Avid Learning present Artist's Eye, a journey of resilience and resurgence. A panel discussion that dwells into the creative responses of Mumbai's practitioners over the last two years of COVID-19 and how it has paved the way for a lasting artistic legacy. Allow me to introduce our evening speakers. Documentary photographer, Fawzan Hussain. Poet, translator and editor, Mustan Dalvi. Artist and co-founder, Start India Foundation, Hanif Qureshi. Founder and director of the Bombay Theatre Company, Ravish Jaiswal, and they will be in conversation with the Head of Marketing and Communications at the CSMVS, Joyati Roy. To know more about our very esteemed speakers, please refer to their very impressive bios that have been posted in the chat box. They should have been emailed to you also earlier. These speakers and artists will reflect on their journey from resilience to resurgent in these tumultuous times and how they've adapted to these challenges of the pandemic and how does their artistic practice hold a mirror to the times we live in. They will also share how they have transcended geographies and boundaries to find digital collaborations and much more. Please note the session will last 75 minutes followed by a 15 minute Q&A in which Joyti will be taking questions. So please keep them posted, keep posting them throughout the session in the Q&A box. On that note, thank you once again for tuning in. Over to Joyti to level set and look forward to a fascinating session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Asad. And um, it's really a privilege that uh, in these times we are able to collaborate and do programs together like this. Um, and I feel particularly privileged because I think this is almost the fifth or the sixth program that we are doing in collaboration with the Kalagora Association with Avid Learning. And uh, somehow we have been able to build this synergy um, of talking about the arts to uh, all our publics put together. So, so thank you for, for putting this. Um, to begin with, uh, I, I must say that, you know, um, I was particularly struck by the multitude of faculties that each of the speakers have today. Uh, Asad has already introduced them and, and our, our viewers can read their profiles. But I think it's quite obvious looking at all your experiences that making art cannot be a standalone endeavor and that making art uh, cannot be disconnected with life, with livelihoods, with our politics and with our ideologies. It's rather obvious that practitioners like yourselves um, get what you create um, from the lives that you lead and from the very complex societies that we are part of. Before I request each of you to present your thoughts um, and indeed your work, uh, please allow me to share a couple of anecdotes from the museum through which I would like to frame some of the questions around why today's conversation is significant. Please allow me to share my screen. The CSMVS, like all other artistic and creative organizations, underwent a tremendously challenging time from March 2020 until February 2022. We continue to mend our situation brick by brick, stitch by stitch. Moving through numerous lockdowns, openings and closings, we have realized many things. When we opened for the public after the first lockdown, somewhere in November 2020, we knew that we cannot just open all the galleries together. So what could we do to offer a safe and enjoyable visit to our publics? 
It came as a pleasant revelation that the museum has sprawling gardens, numerous pathways, hundreds of trees and plants, lots of sunshine, breeze, and the view to the open skies. Things that we had taken for granted, perhaps for over a century. For our visitors who came from all walks of life, who were locked up in small buildings, societies, and rooms, there could be no better experience than just lying on the grass and breathing freely. The CSMVS opened up to the public by allowing families to hold picnics in the garden. Slots were booked and people just came and hung around under our trees. They did not enter the galleries always. They didn't bother about the history. They didn't demand a cafe. They just breathed the fresh air. Now the museum is as much the building and its collections as it is its garden. We learned that we cannot separate culture from nature. They are connected and that's what our visitors respond to. This will now reflect in our curation, our programming, our funding and development activities and our vision towards the bicentenary. And this by far has been a great learning that the pandemic has offered us. In 2022, we plan to build a biodiversity garden, an open garden pavilion for children to learn how to farm and care for the earth. Somewhere in June, July 2020, we realized that we won't be getting gate money for months to come. Our collections would suffer, our people would suffer. What could we do as creative people? How could we be creative with our administration and finances? This is when we realized how intimately the arts are linked to our livelihoods, how society perceives art and how it supports it. We put out a call to the people of Mumbai to adopt their heritage, to adopt galleries and objects for three years where they would make a contribution and this contribution would help look after the objects in storage display and in their upkeep. This gave us the clue that funding for the arts can happen in many unique ways, and we should not underestimate individual donations, however small, because they are freewheeling with no attached strings and promise a level of participation that cannot match any other kind of contribution. In January, we made an exhibition called Dhanam, Philanthropy with Love. These displays presented all the objects that were adopted and we found that the most precious pieces in our collection were well protected by the people who adopted them. Our director general has already gone um, on public platform to say that we have collected nearly five crores through our adoption schemes, which now support the collection. Just to end, the former director of BBC, John Tusa, has commented on many matters related to the arts. And one of the propositions that he made is that the arts are useless, not to say that they are not priority, but to clarify that it's difficult to quantify what the arts are useful for, what they can do. And yet they are extremely fundamental. They're almost as necessary as food. And because they are never in or out of fashion, there is an inherent stability in the arts, something that we have all realized during and after the pandemic. My anthropologist friends will agree that human evolution is so fundamentally entwined with the arts that our first tools, the hand axes that were created some 2 million years ago, were a sign that our brains can imagine, dream, and our hands can create. Something that artists do from then and do it today. So clearly, artists like yourselves have survived everything. Ice ages, volcanoes, earthquakes, pandemics, and we also know that artists survive unemployment, poverty, competition, and often injustice. As Bertolt Brecht once said, in the dark times, will there also be singing? Yes, there will also be singing about the dark times. And I think what we're going to hear today from artists is very much that. It is with this brief introduction that I invite our first speaker, Mustansi Dalbi, to present his thoughts through poetry, through imagery. Mustansi. Uh, so thank you. Uh, thank you to Avid, the CSMVS, and the Kala Ghoda uh, for organizing this uh, rather wonderful event. Uh, I am here more in the capacity as a 
as a listener rather than a presenter, even though I'll make a brief presentation, because I'm tremendously excited to see what the other panelists uh, are going to talk about and put up uh, in the course of this uh, evening. Uh, my uh, small contribution to this uh, emerged out of, in one sense, the very dark times that you just mentioned. Uh, and interestingly, has gone through a couple of shifts uh, since the time I started. Uh, essentially, I wrote a small book of poems uh, during the lockdown. And this book was uh, kind of necessitated by, for myself as a means by which one could archive the times. Uh, you all remember the early months of 2020 when the lockdown started in the first months and the first two months were probably the most traumatic, uh, not so much for a group of privileged people, and I'm one of them, where we could safely sit at home and kind of bide the time that the pandemic, uh, that the pandemic was at its peak. But looking outwards, uh, on television and news and social media, you saw thousands of people who were walking home, having no other choice and having been given no other alternative. Uh, and the absolutely callous uh, kind of attitude of the state almost, you know, about uh, the way these people were treated. I found myself as uh, in, in empathy with their uh, with their travails, although by no means can I say that I shared the actual uh, experience, but nevertheless, that led to the creation of uh, poetry, uh, which is what I uh, I write, and I'd like to show you. Uh, so, uh, in in uh, in 2020, around August, uh, I published a small book. Of eighteen poems in an ebook format uh, with the Yavanika Press in Bangalore, called Walk, and in this I uh, wrote about uh, through my eyes seeing the experience of people walking home. So I'd like to talk a little bit about that, and at the same time maybe read uh, a few poems. So I'll, I'll just begin with one, so that you know one can kind of set the stage. And uh, in one sense, this is also a kind of credo kind of poem because this is how I felt about it all. Uh, you know, how does one uh, put out anger at what is happening when one is absolutely helpless to really impact that which is happening? So this is a poem called Night Walkers. All these poems are very short. They're all 10 line poems, you know, because then I was able to kind of get a, a very focused image in each of these. Night walkers. Night walkers glide through tier three towns, zephyrs susurrate through streets, rise to murmurations, then fall silent. Rivulets meet, break, tumescent, quicksilver, never reaching a momentum that would lead to deluge. No hive mind this. Everyone remains the nayak of their own story. The desire for relief is a bucket of cold water poured over every glowing ember of revolution. So this was one of the kind of central thoughts, you know, that we have a situation where the helplessness has reached such a stage that you do not even see a push against it. And that is what we found uh, in the people walking home and so many even dying uh, in, in the process. Uh, when this book came out, uh, it was appreciated. It was an e-book. Several people bought it. And I mean, it, 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 nice things were said about it. And for me, I thought that, you know, this would be one way of creating a bit of an archive of the event and, you know, uh, putting myself as a witness to it and that, you know, that there would be a time when we would look back at this and 
you know, see what we had learned. Very interestingly, the time for looking back has not yet arrived because to a very large extent, we are where we are. Uh, in 2021, then, uh, this exercise was uh, kind of uh, taken forward uh, in the form of publishing this book now as a physical book, uh, but not only to have my poems, but also to have them translated uh, into Hindi, Marathi, and Gujarati. Uh, and that was, an, uh, that, that was a very interesting project, which was kind of... Uh, initiated by my friend, the poet Heman Divte, who started uh, translating my poems, you know, just out of fun, but then it kind of developed into a proper project. And then we approached the Gujarati poet uh, Udayan Thakkar uh, to kind of uh, uh, make the translations uh, in, in, in Gujarati. So together, and, and I did something uh, which I had done for the first time, which was translate my own poems in Hindi. I normally do it the other way around. You know, I translate poems from other languages to English, but taking uh, the chance of you know being able to translate my poems into Hindi was a completely new uh, experience. And uh, I have done what I have done, so to speak. Uh, and that has now become part of this book. So as this book came together, it became a bit of a unique experiment in that you don't normally see a four language book uh, as a single uh, publication. So I had 18 poems, I added two more. So 20 poems uh, are now put out in this, uh, in this kind of four way book. But then one very interesting thing also happened which we, uh, as a you know, act of immense graciousness and that is uh, uh, my publisher, uh, Heman Devte, uh, approached uh, Sudhir Patwardhan, uh, the uh, very noted senior artist, uh, and asked for some images so that they may also become part of this book. And uh, Mr. Patwardhan was exceedingly kind to give us five of his images. Uh, that went into this book. Uh, very interestingly, four of these were also painted by him as a response to this very moment, you know, the, the displacement of people and so on. And so as we put his image on the cover and as we had sections, we put his images in each of the sections. And I, I have no hesitation in saying that he is the fifth translator, you know, because his images itself form a, a part of the experience that kind of so smoothly and so beautifully kind of come into uh, into the picture of uh, these poems itself. And I'd like to, as part of this presentation, just show those. This is part of the, the cover image, an exceedingly beautiful uh, painting about, you know, leaving the city. Uh, the name of the painting is Distant City. And since this is on screen, uh, perhaps I might just read one poem also. Uh, this is the first poem. This is a poem called Loyalty. Can't wait to get out of this city. Can't wait to get out of this shop. Here's the thing. I've taken all I can. I've been given nothing. Even a bag of bones needs a roof. Under the stars we find fresh air freedom, bellies rumble, but at least our feet are allowed to move of their own volition. The flesh is no longer slave to wages, the heart no longer mortgaged to duty. Uh, So the poems come from very different angles. And one of the things that I did do is because this is also, in a sense, a story of the road, uh, tried to uh, take some inspiration from, you know, the kind of things that are written behind trucks and things like that. You've all read them, very famous one, you know, Buri Nazarwale, Tera Mukala, Horn, OK, Please, and so on. 
and some of these kind of led to uh, poems uh, that emerged out of which i'd like to read one because there is one uh, thing which is found behind trucks and rickshaws in cities and all that which is very interesting and it is uh, a label called ghar kabaoge uh, you may have seen that and you have it written ghar kabaoge with uh, a lady staring into the distance at a road you know waiting for her lover or husband to come home so this uh, gave the kind of muse so to speak for a poem ghar kabaoge your last whatsapp was 14 days ago i was 14 when you were married to me now you only have the clothes on your back does it matter what are clothes between us but impediments to an eyelid i wait by the door with a bottle of sal for your blistered feet have a care all roads to home are barred and guarded come by way of the roofs dear as you did when i was 13 uh so well uh, these are the kind of poems uh, that are there in this book and of course their translations also into the three languages and uh, maybe i can just end by showing you one more image and one more poem uh this is a very short poem which is inspired by a marathi poem by arun kolatkar uh, called mumbai ne bhikhe slaula or bombay beggared me bombay beggared me i sold all my things for a bottle of bisleri a town with no name provisioned me with sattu and jaggery i met a truck driver told him about myself the man drove away quoting scripture etc i found a bd stub by the road pocketed it reaching agra road my slipper broke in two thinking it over i decided it was time never to return so i like i said that this went through a couple of stages the first was of course writing the poems during the moment they were all written in a month and a half just when the people walking home was at its at its peak and the traumatic images were all around us and we thought that okay you know this will go on and the pandemic will end and then we will get back to our lives and so on and that didn't happen even a year after that and that is when this multilingual project started and then the book came out in uh, in december and we would we thought once again you know that we can have an event and release the book and look back at what happened and so on but then again in this year itself nothing got over uh, so we are where we are you know in in various ways we say things are over things are not over you have the virus and then you have the delta variation the omicron variation and so on and even today there are people who are equally helpless who are equally on the road even though things have opened out so this book in one sense has never been able to reach a certain sense of closure and has not yet become like i wanted it to become any sort of archive and that is where things stand so thank you so much for allowing me to read my poems and make this little presentation thank you thank you so much mustan sir i think i think what comes across very strongly from your chronicles is the sense of silence and waiting that sort of just loomed on us in the beginning days um and we all realize that it's it's the working class that makes this city and its and its noises and its sounds and when they left really everything fell to the ground literally True. um and we will come back to to have a little more conversation about uh, about how you reflected on this but let's move on um similar to what mustan said has shared sometimes silence is stronger than words and forzan's images stand testimony to the deep marks that the recent times have left us with i request forzan to talk about his images everyone knows that his work is as much inward 
as it's outward. And literally his entire repertoire is um, very much a reflection um, of how he thinks, how he's led his life and how his art gets created through the milestones of his life. Um, and let's see what, what he thought about during this time. Ozan. Okay, my journey or rather the work started the day the lockdown was announced, you know. And if you recollect, a uh, few of you may be aware of the fact that I did a book on Bombay, which was like between Bombay and Mumbai, 25 years in pictures through a changing city. So there I worked on this book for 25 years. Now, what I was, I didn't expect that Bombay would be locked down in such a way. I always thought that there would be some pockets where it would be active. And the day it was announced that there would be a total lockdown, I just thought that I had to go back to all the places that I had been earlier and to check the contrast that what Bombay was always a chaos city, there's so much happening around and suddenly I find that nothing happening around, you know. So from the day two, I started my journey of documenting the city, which I've always done, you know, and uh, I would go step out on every alternate day. One day I will shoot. Second day, I would go back to office, download the images, read up where I can go the next day, plan it out, take permissions, whatever that needed to be done in the office, I would do the next day. Then again, the alternate day, I would step out, come back. It, this went on for almost three months, you know. And um, everybody was worried in my family. But I said, you know, I will never, ever be able to get this city aspect in terms of visuals, you know, where you find nobody on the road. Okay. So I'm going to walk you through some of the images that I am planning to bring out a book on, and it's, which is called Mumbai in Lockdown. So the, 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 this is a cover that you all are looking at. It's, it's, a, it's a strand, the city, the Kali Pili, you know, which I've been working on for a long time now. I went back again to see those same spots and I found this car unmoved, uncleaned for a couple of months, you know. So all so I found it very interesting. The whole black of this of the of the taxi was absolutely gray and white, you know. So this, this was the this is going to be my opening picture, which obviously has uh, the taxi drivers in the background uncertain about what and when they're going to start working on, you know. Okay, next. Okay, so now um, as I travel in the city and I I took my two-wheeler, which was, I think, very convenient that could take me into nooks and corners and always prefer to travel on a two-wheeler. So this is uh, this is was the scene at Bandra where every banner, you know, every every hoarding had Corona thing, you know. So this uh, the, these are the prime hoardings in city where which are sold in lakhs and lakhs, but this was the only time which had nothing but Corona managed on all of them, you know. So I thought this would become one of those images which will never ever get repeated, you know. Next. Okay, this is very close to where I stay. This is uh, the junction of uh, Baikala. On the left is the fire brigade. And it's a junction of four roads coming together. And this is a scene which really brought me, you know, kind of a goosebumps, you know, because uh, I have traveled on this road almost, uh, you know, most of my life, you know, having stayed very close to this place. And here I could see not a soul on the road, you know. So this was a very, very striking image of what I had shot earlier with a lot of vegetable trucks and all that plying on this place, you know. It's also very close to the Baikala market. So this is one. Next. Okay, again, this is a cow gully, very near to marine lines, you know, and which has lined up a lot of shops for, uh, for you know, uh, office goers for lunchtime. And it was all shut with a solitary figure of a woman sitting in one corner, not knowing where the next meal is going to come to her, you know, because I'm sure that she's a frequenter of this place, having, uh, you know, being given a lot of food on, on odd days, uh, on a normal odd days, you know. So yeah, everything was shut and she was in solitude and I just captured this image, which I felt with the foreground of a lot of uh, food banners telling me about uh, what was being sold in, in, in a good normal day, you know. Next. 
uh, one good thing that I could see happening in the city was people stepping out and helping out in whatever small ways they could, you know. So we had a uh, lot of people who would just, uh, you don't need to be associated with the NGO and all that, just common people, you know, would just pack some food and go around in lanes and by lanes and stop wherever they could and find somebody needy whom they could hand over the food and water, you know. So this was also near uh, Parsi Jim Khana, or uh, Parsi Dairy at at the uh, Ch- Marine Lines Chani Road Bridge, you know, which I which I thought was very interesting, you know. Next, this is the this is a VT station, absolutely empty, you know, absolutely empty, not a soul. Even I was you know asked ten questions before stepping onto the station, and I had to you know make my way around and convince the cops that I am doing a documentary on this. And uh, they reluctantly allowed me. So I spent some half an hour looking at the station from every angle and trying to shoot pictures of the isolation over here, you know. Next. Okay, the biggest, uh, I would say, the calamity of the migrants and the laborers, the daily wage laborers, basically, was that everything came to a shut and construction was the biggest, uh, I would say, one of the biggest, uh, uh, what's the right word, you know, calamity on in, in this, uh, in this pandemic, you know, and people, uh, and uh, I, I just went around looking at uh, places where people had constructed half construction, full construction, not everything was everything was shut in in the sense like no workers nothing you know and there were few workers who were stranded and they had no idea so where where the next meal is going to be ca- coming from you know so this is another construction all stopped uh, in a in a central bombay situation next oh yeah for the, the all this all this uh, very interestingly you know this these are the maidans we would play you know uh, occasionally and have a look at a lot of matches happening you know and all these were converted into temporary markets and uh, like uh, the, no, no, the normal functioning markets were not operational and uh, they all shifted them to maidan because maidan had space you know so you could spread out your your selling uh, vegetables and fruits and this again i uh, uh, was shot near baikala where loads and loads of bhajis were being sold and people were just uh, desperately buying it, uh, not knowing whether it will be arriving tomorrow. So people were just stocking it. And uh, one good thing was also I could move around and buy a lot of vegetables and fruits for myself and my family. And uh, this was one instance where the, one entire uh, small tempo had come down uh, from Nasik and it had just uh, offloaded the entire bhajis, you know. And people just within within a span of like 15, 20 minutes, it was all gone, like, you know. Next. Okay, uh, this uh, the Ramzan, you know, basically in the evening time, you, the as you must be aware, Bombay, every mosque, every masjid in the in the town is like choco block with uh, devotees who break fast together. And because of this pandemic, uh, everything was shut. So this is uh, Hari Masjid uh, near uh, Nakpada, where it, it was the evening breaking of fast and I could find only two people. One was the Mosnin. And the other one was the caretaker of the mosque who were like trying to break fast in isolation. Next. Then I I tried and looked at the migrant workers who were affected the most. And uh, poor guys, they had they would come in day in and day out and just line, line up for any 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 transport that can take them to they're back to the village or to the station or the train can take them back to the village and all these bags would be lined up day in and day out you know like it was kind of a, a spot that you're blocking for yourself and then suddenly I, I saw this a young a young woman with a kid also li- trying to line up uh, in the same queue with her belongings you know so, and this was near Nakpada again next Okay, I, I, this, this boy was so, so amazing, you know, he just didn't let that uh, test happen to him. And uh, this was before he could be admitted in the hospital. 
and it, it was for different reason but they had to take a test of him before they could admit him so his resistance was like amazing and and i and this poor, uh, the doctor had to keep uh, playing with him and keep cajoling him to give a test to him you know so this is one of the resistant movements of the small child okay so uh, there we end uh, in fact this is a book uh, which might uh, get published very soon and these are just a small glimpse of the images that i have picked up from the from the book to give you an idea what the book would look like and uh, there we are thank you thank you so much for zan uh, when uh, you know it's i think what comes across very strongly from your work Uh, are these fundamental things that we kind of were brought back to you know where is my food going to come from tomorrow uh, it's it and i think it hit everyone because it was not just about what's in the fridge it was about what's in the market is it there in the market what's in the field is it being you know so the entire sort of social chain of how we survive in the urban scape kind of became bare and i think we um, we all were challenged in different ways and uh, the way you have chronicled this is um it's it's i think already an archive but it's also um gives goosebumps of the times that we've just passed through and we are still living it uh, in many parts so thank you thank you so much for sharing thank you this. thank you um well our next speaker um ravish uh theater is all about being live isn't it uh and how have we done without this live theater um this live contact between the actor and the audience is something that we hear from Ravish today um and really is is theater becoming uh something for a different medium in a more fundamental way uh let's hear what Ravish has to say through his experience of making theater in these times yeah thank you thank you jayati uh, hello everyone i'm glad to be here so uh let me just start by sharing my screen i have a very small presentation and through this i once again i just wanted to share our journey and how we progressed throughout the pandemic uh just let me know once my screen is visible is it visible sure yeah so um i'll quickly narrate the story like uh, i just want to share with all of you that um i'm really proud of my team uh, what we achieved and what we did during this uh, tough time and this story is not about us it's about all of us because if in our sector we were able to do something when the whole world was shut down i'm sure there are many more and we have seen examples which were shared by my fellow colleagues as well that many things happened even though the world was shut down and for us um, it was a silver lining in some or the other way so let me just quickly share our journey uh, in fact we also like to call ourselves bombay theater company as pandemic babies because we literally uh, you know started in the pandemic um uh, the conceptualization happened before pandemic so there was a play which i had written in jan 2020 and we were starting out the company uh, me and my wife uh, in the beginning and we thought let's stage this play and announce that we have arrived as a theater company in bombay um the play was supposed to happen in april 2020 and in feb things started to turn bad and we realized that everything is shut this can't happen we had one option of deciding ki let's forget it uh we haven't really done anything just a facebook page or instagram page nothing much let's wait we'll do something later on the other hand we thought why not try something let's do something let's, let's you know uh announce or do something then there was an idea which came to my mind that we'll go virtual so we'll start doing virtual plays but the only problem i had with virtual plays was i really didn't uh you know accept the fact that we'll be putting up like one and a half hour kind of plays on a virtual platform maybe a zoom because obviously people will rather watch a netflix or an amazon and as joyti you spoke about the theater angle in in how we were making it um physical theater was not at all possible and to be very frank i say this from my fraternity of theater i think we were the most uncertain people uh, film still worked netflix amazon rocketed theater was very uncertain and we suffered a big deal but i took a call let's go virtual and instead of doing like a big one and a half hour kind of virtual plays let's do short plays like a 10 minute kind of plays and i've been doing theater for 13 years in my career i've done a lot of short plays directed and acted and wrote a lot of short plays i thought let's try doing this and instead of zoom we experimented with a platform called instagram because instagram if all of you are aware it has a live feature you can go live and you can you know do stuff 
and that was an interesting thing because once we started performing on instagram we saw people joining in so it was a live thing and we thought maybe we are performing this from the comfort of our houses but still it's live so we can't really goof up with our lines it's a live uh, thing which is happen which happens in the theater so then we started uh, i think our first play we did in july 2020 and i was really thrilled even though we had only 100 followers 60 people watched the play live and uh, we got a very good response and then we started staging some more short plays and then we got a bit of confidence that this is working out then i decided that why not uh, and then we started receiving a lot of collaboration requests from people from actors and artists who were literally suppressed because they really didn't have anything to do they wrote to us saying that can we collaborate on something and there i thought that we will curate a theatrical festival which we called the theater project uh, the idea was to invite uh, english speaking actors and english playwrights who write short play to share their work with us and we decided that we're going to pick the best cast the best actors and we'll do this play like over every weekend from october to december 2020 uh, we were so happy joyati that um, we received acting entries of 180 actors across the country and around 85 play scripts uh actually i was not prepared for this uh, it was very humbling uh, i never expected this kind of response but like i said i think we were very few who were doing something and people really wanted to do something uh, you know creative and then obviously a tough casting process happened shortlisting process happened and finally we staged like 10 um, uh, you know short plays with two actors in each play and 20 actors and this got us humongous coverage in the media a lot of publications covered us they did a lot of stories and the interesting thing part uh, part was all these 20 actors and 10 playwrights came from 17 cities of india so literally we had an entry from andaman as well so that's how everybody came together rehearsed on zoom uh, created a play then on instagram and performed the play so literally i had one actor performing from guwahati one from bangalore and till date maybe they haven't met but they collaborated in that way and i directed all of them from bombay virtually so this was something which was really wonderful for us uh, gave us a lot of courage to move forward then as we say god helps uh, those who help themselves uh, the international call came to me so one of uh, uh, playwrights in new york city i think she stumbled upon our page and she saw our plays and she really liked the kind of work we were doing and uh, she said can we collaborate i said why not and she shared some of her short scripts with me and i said yeah we'll put up one of them in the way we have done the previous plays and then she told me ravish you can indianize it you can cast your actors and do it but then I, it struck me like i mean if you're doing it virtually why not take american actors i mean why do indianize it and then finally we casted like three american actors from new york city and did the play and i directed it from bombay and there the journey of going international started and then we did a play uh, in england and then a very interesting play in los angeles uh, so this is one of my favorite plays which we did uh, it's called ride home uh, it's written by my la uh, playwright julian jigor and this was actually a play about two people talking having a conversation in a car it was a 15 minute play now let me tell you the staging bit which i feel it's very interesting and i thought i did a good job with this so ideally this play had like two people in a car one has driven uh, across to get his friend on board and they travel back to home and have a conversation now you see the picture here on my screen this is the live screenshot of the play which was happening on instagram now these two people both are from la but both of them are sitting in their real cars in their own garage in different places in la but the way we blocked this play it looked like they are actually sitting in one car and talking to each other Uh, we just tried making it you know look that way so safe theater what we call it. and this was a big success and uh, you know people really enjoyed watching it uh, you know how they performed and and it actually if you see this guy on the left he's looking at him as if he's sitting next to him so i think that was something we were able to create very nicely and i was really happy the kind of talent i got joyati i mean obviously there was no monetization involved for it was just for the love of theater be it us england or india so the gentleman on the left uh, mr uh, julio hansen he has worked with grammy winning artists so he is an actor there in la and he accepted to work with me maybe seeing my past work or maybe what we are trying to do the other guy who's on the steering wheel his name is anthony rutovitz so if you all have seen the oscar winning film marriage story so the lead actor adam driver anthony was a stand in for adam so he says in hollywood uh, so i was lucky to have these kind of people collaborate with me and it was a wonderful time uh, you know spent with them 
uh, this was we also got a lot of international and local coverage regarding this play and like i said guys uh, nothing was impossible because i could have never thought of going international in physical context so early it all happened because of the virtual connections after that uh, the recent which we did last year this was something like we were very confident of taking a leap and then we said that we'll raise our bar further we staged a horror play which was simultaneously staged from four countries with five actors for 15 minutes so i had an actor in bombay stockholm sweden manchester and los angeles so it was literally this play was staged across three continents i had a harrowing time in setting up the rehearsals because we were juggling four time zones but finally we were able to do it so i've just put across some screenshots of the rehearsals how it happened and i think from the faces of the actors you'll realize it was a horror play so so it was a wonderful experience to do that <clears throat> finally coming december last year the play which i had written in jan 2020 finally we staged it in december 2022 in bombay and good number i mean we had almost a full house for both the shows and it was a wonderful and ennobling experience that after two years we were actually putting up a a physical show in bombay and this was something a loop close kind of thing after two years we were able to stage it <clears throat> now just to share uh, you know what all things we were able to do because of the virtual network i always wanted to get into film production and my team was very sure that this was something on my mind i love cinema i love theater theater is still the first love i have but we always wanted to go into films because obviously th theater has a limited reach film has more reach now this project uh, which you see on my screen we are currently working on it born out of that so my writer in la she had written another short play which was called domestic hell and when i read this short play i thought iski film bahut achhi ban sakti hai and that was a thought in my mind way back in july and i took my writer on board and said that i want to do this i don't know when because i was very sure joyati that i don't want to make just a short film by putting in uh, you know a small sum of money from my pocket and make it i want to i wanted to make it at a big level not like just making a short film so i actually adapted this um, you know to a film script and waited 6 months to get funding uh, for this in the meantime i also kind of thought of onboarding certain people the most important person is a cinematographer uh maybe after a director and that too i was lucky and and i kind of just put up an ad on an instagram account and by this time like over one and a half years uh our followers from 100 we almost grown to five and a half thousand followers genuine followers and i thought let's put a word out and see if i can find people to collaborate i was so thrilled to get very nice responses uh, uh cinematographers have studied in london film school from prague film school fti they applied to me i met some of them personally and then i finalized one cinematographer and i was lucky to have him uh, his name is prateek and uh, in 2020 there was only one indian film which was shortlisted at cannes film festival and won so prateek had shot that film and now he's the dop of this project so i was really thrilled to make those kind of connections in network and after 6 months finally i'm happy to say that we have raised funds for this film and uh, we are planning to shoot this in april with some hopefully known faces from the film industry and let's see how things goes so all i wanted to say just started with the instagram play and we are here now uh, it's not about the good work we did we obviously did i'm proud of the team but it's like there are many so many people like us who did something when it was the most difficult time for all of us but i think we all were rewarded so and just to end the last slide of my presentation i mean being also a corporate professional 6 uh, years of experience i experimented with one more thing which is called theater based learning or theater based communication theater based training which i have even when i was doing my master at tis i did my ma research on this and i was very sure that once i kind of quit my corporate job i'll get into this research more about this and we created a lot of modules and uh, you know projects for these corporates and we were happy to do some corporate work as well so yeah so this has been our journey uh, joyti and team and very happy just uh, hoping that things go better for us from here as well so thank you thanks a lot thank you thank you so much ravish and, and thank you for ending with ball i mean it's ironic in a way but <laughs> but you put it to practice in a in a great sense and i think one of the things that uh, you know all the theater walas were struggling with is that they were all kind of trying to translate what you do on a stage on a screen 
but i think in many ways you cracked it beautifully because you use the grammar of the platform and try to translate your work into that um which uh, i i believe is a great blessing uh, because now you can oscillate between the live stage and the online stage quite comfortably without feeling weak in in yeah, i yeah. um well uh, we'll we'll come back with lots i'm sure lo lots of people have lots of questions but our last presentation today is by hanif qureshi who's very very well known of course um and i i i come from delhi and i know what the what the lodi uh, arts project had done for the people of delhi uh, in terms of not only reclaiming public place for the arts uh, but just creating a beautiful beautiful vista for um, for the bygoers and um, it it it's critical it's um it's uh, political it's beautiful it's everything that you want to see um while going to work or returning home um and of course uh, honey if you've done this not just in delhi you've done it in mumbai you've done it in hyderabad um and um it's it's really a remarkable project that um clearly wasn't waiting for the pandemic to flower but uh clearly through the pandemic there have been new layers to it so uh, looking forward to you sharing with us um, where the street art uh, foundation has gone during the pandemic and what has it done so when the when the pandemic struck uh, what uh, we were preparing for the mahim uh, east station uh, the mahim uh, west station uh, which is the entry to our mahim east art district uh, through this bridge when you cross uh, you reach the 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 art district which we have been working for the last 4 uh, 5 years uh we had a completely different uh, idea for this uh, but then when the when this corona struck we uh had to do something which suited the times and at the at the same time we also all of us felt that like you know for us that what is essential and what is not essential because at the after some point uh it was just black and white you know that what is essential and what's not but while uh we felt that it is also our duty to uh uh give respect to the you know as a tribute to these frontline workers so we kind of like uh, uh for this wall we worked with uh, do and khatra is a delhi based uh, artist uh, and uh, this painter muni from uh, from rajkot uh, who came and helped uh, with painting of this we had to be very uh, careful when when we started working here because uh, this is the first time everyone scared it is a lockdown and there's really no one out there uh, so we had to like uh, to sanitize the whole space so uh, all of the equipments after like every you know every few hours and it was difficult but we thought that it was important for us to continue working in the public space uh, during the covid times as well um, and so that's the tribute to my uh, you know all the essential workers uh, which is painted in mahim station uh, at the same time after we finished this uh, mural we actually got many many requests from all different parts of india asking for us to like do the tribute to the covid workers we did one more in in bihar but after a point we said okay we would like to not just you know be with the whole masked imagery all our like you know in the coming time uh, and we decided to kind of like not keep our themes based on the covid uh, because then it that would kind of like just continue to happen so uh we should we uh, we also continue work in mahim east uh, art district uh, this is a project by aravani art uh, project it's a collective which allows you know the transgenders to also uh, create uh, to participate in the art practice uh, making the space more open uh, for all gender equality and people uh, yeah so uh, with this project called me we which is uh, main hum in in mahim uh, this was about like everyday mahim about like you know that with uh, we in around in project and working on ideas which is uh, reflecting uh, everyday people it's not just about like heroes but it's also about yeah just us you know and what they did it, this was like a one month long community project which where they interacted with the community uh, obviously with all the, the covid uh, rules and masks and everything uh, 
but at the end of it, uh, the aim was to also like you know make these uh, murals. Also, they did many workshops. It was like a month long activity where you see on the small wall on your uh, this left corner where all the students and everyone also came out and painted because it was also important for to let people come out of a uh, out of that and uh, we thought that somewhere it is our responsibility to also make the city landscape more livelier whenever people come out of it uh, because uh, the colors also bring some kind of relief uh, which is uh, you know, uh, better than gray uh, so the at the end of it they ended up in like these two murals uh, in the mahim east uh, art district which is a reflection of like what's you know what how it is uh, the everyday life reflection on on these two walls which are actually facing each other uh, in this uh, art districts, we have uh, more than 20, 25 works uh, by different artists uh, uh, from India and, and abroad. Um, you can access this um, through Dharag. This is an area called Shavunagar, uh, but we call it a Mahim East Art District. Uh, at the same time, for the World Environment uh, Day, uh, we did one mural in, in Verli. Uh, as, as you um, come from the Hajeli towards towards the world, this wall is on your on your right hand side, uh, kind of showcasing the what the, the state of Maharashtra also has to offer in terms of its wildlife and nature. It's talking about the tribute to Mahim workers. This is the some of the images of of Mahim. Uh, we're talking about Mahim East Art District which are some of the everyday Mahin stories by uh, you know, around the art project. These are the two murals which I was talking about. I'm glad that someone said that screen was not visible. So, okay, now that at least, so you can see the, uh, you know, these two murals which are like opposite each other. And this is a residential colony called Shahunagar and we call it a Mahin East Art District where uh, you can access it through the Mahim station and from Dharavi. Uh, we did one more mural in Verli uh, to celebrate the Environment Day and showcasing the rich uh, wild, wildlife of Maharashtra. It was painted by Afzan. Continuing the Daroj Mumbai on the on the walls of uh, Verli, which is the Lovru wall, uh, where again we are. Uh, a lot of times uh, these horizontal walls uh, are in the city and and often this kind of like painted you know uh, by different different people and it's a lot of times visually not uh, pleasant uh, but we've been trying to work out in a way that where you know, this this long format can be can be cracked and uh, with Rauni uh, we are working on again showcasing reflecting uh, what surrounds us uh, in our surrounding, but in a more more of a color colorful fashion. So these are some uh, close-ups of you know, the stories of uh, it's a long long wall. Uh, in between, we also finished a project which we are working in lower parade for past year and a half. Uh, and a lot of times, whenever there is a you know. A, an underpass painting comes in and it is it's always the colors and it's always so busy but here in in low parilla uh, because the entire uh, history of this area was based on you know the textiles and how you know the textiles mills used to surround this area at, at one point and then what kind of transformation uh, this whole space has gone through uh, connected with uh, with the flowers of of the other flower market, which is where where this you know flower starts from, uh, and the idea was to kind of again you know present the city with its own history in a in a very uh, interesting way. We don't have some great pictures of this, uh, but yeah, this is out there. Uh, continuing the Roj Wall 
on Mumbai because uh, when we painted the wall uh, on on one side, uh, we were also asked to paint on a uh, this underpass. And here we thought it would be nice to again continuing the same story of you know that everyday everyday life. This is by again by Aravani Art Project. So it, in fact, we've been kind of like almost working with Aravani in Mumbai for this everyday stories for the like in the past uh, one year. And as we speak, they just kind of like finished this particular uh, underpass. So sorry, the flyover. And uh, yeah, so these are again, uh, personality, personalities of Mumbai uh, in Mumbai. And yeah, it's still work in progress. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hani, for sharing them. Uh, I think your work is very much out there for people to see. So, um, so people, I'm, I'm sure they encounter it more often than, than hearing you about it. Um, and it's, it's really fantastic how you've, um, you've created these vistas uh, in the city um, where, you know, people could quickly just kind of zoom in into the life of Mumbai in a very, very beautiful way, um, rather than just doing it digitally or or on other platforms. Um, I think we do have some time for a few questions that I wanted to pose to all of you. And then there are some questions from the audience, which, which you all can take. Uh, my first question really is to, to Mustansir and Ravish. Um, and that is um, from the point of view that, you know, of course, as artists, as, as poets, um, as, as theater people, you've been creating something throughout this time. But what have you been watching? Do you think that uh, do you think that the way audiences um, have changed, or have they changed in the way they consume art um, through this period? Is are there some trends that you have observed um, which you are sort of mindful of uh, when you um, when you start creating or thinking about new works in the future? I know as artists um, of your caliber and of your might, you you might not always be creating. Uh, to play to the audience, but are there things that you will be mindful of uh, for the audience in the future? So, please, Mr. Dalvi, you we'll take first. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't have any uh, special answers uh, about this, other than you know certain other things that we did do in the course of uh, uh, the last two years. One is. Uh, both the both my versions of my book came out with independent publishers. So I think here is a call out for the indie publisher because I think that you know in in the space of large economies, the indie publishers somehow slip through quite well and can sustain you know if they have a model that can work out even through these very tough times and in the process, uh, you know give us so much uh, you know to read. So uh, that is one possible uh, answer that I have uh, for you. The other is that uh, as far as, you know, the public sharing of poetry is concerned, the readings of poetry, they, they only went up, you know, they didn't stop. Uh, the, the downside is we could not do it in person, but uh, otherwise uh, uh, with, with platforms such as these, uh, these are events that just went on, and uh, I I was lucky enough to participate in several in such events and several online literary festivals and, and so on. Uh, the only one kind of thing of note uh, which happened, I think, towards the end of 2020 was uh, uh, an event which was organized at an international level uh, in which uh, a poetry form called Renga was worked out, uh, where a hundred poets from all over the world actually collaborated to write a single poem. Okay, and, and that worked out quite well. So, you know, each one was one person kind of started it off and then as a kind of chain, uh, people kept on adding on and so on. And that was done uh, with, with poets from, I think, about almost 30 countries. Uh, when it ended, it also got translated. Uh, into a couple of other languages and so on. I think I think even in Japanese, if I'm not wrong. Uh, so that was an important thing. So, you know, collaborations, which otherwise, I think uh, uh, Ravish's uh, kind of 
presentation is probably the uh, kind of key presentation here that ideas which otherwise would not have occurred to us in the course of our you know everyday lives these events suddenly allowed for yeah. the kind of lateral thinking you know and brought out a new forms of doing things that one did in any case but these new forms uh, brought in so much more in terms of new experiences in learning yes yes uh ravish yeah yeah joy this i think uh, you know when you said the first thing what we watched uh, during this time so let me tell you and accept this that uh, i haven't really watched too much of theater virtually to be very frank and let me tell you uh, this thing when we started out we were very sure and till date i'm convinced theater is not to be meant uh, to view virtually because that's not theater we are intruding the space of cinema then you rather make a film but it was all about survival for us we had to do something uh, to be very frank i accept this uh, when we started out we had good viewership like 60 people 80 people watching the play live by the time we went on to international productions ideally the numbers should have been like 100 200 and also our followers were growing exponentially this didn't happen 35 40 30 80. but i ex- expected that uh and i knew theater can never be virtual uh, but it was all about just doing something and uh, you know because like i told you i myself watched more films on netflix rather than watching digital plays because there have been moments when i have watched dis- digital plays you know on a z theater platform and a plays recorded you watch it it's not fun as a theater maker i'll tell you it's not fun so one thing which i feel the team did well was that we created short plays you know 10 minute kind of place because one one and a half hours nobody would have watched actually so and and this is something we are still mindful of even now things are getting better we are staging more physical plays we have a play coming in march and in bandra but we still hope to do virtual play because that is something which really got us attention in the beginning but like you said about the mindfulness i think it will be all about doing short plays uh many people told me that the play which i had written in jan 2020 the 6 pm struggler many people told me ravi share yeah, isko aap virtually kar lo you know how long will you wait i was very sure i'll wait for 5 years i'll never do it virtually and i was lucky that after 2 years finally i got a chance of doing it so but you have to educate the audience but i was very sure that audience educate nahi hone wali hai in my sector of virtual theater because they will watch netflix and amazon and films they won't watch virtual theater so that was something we are mindful and we always will be mindful of that's absolutely correct but i i'm glad you both brought up this idea of collaboration because that certainly got easier uh, you know in in some ways and and to some extent there there was also a sense of kindness from people from different parts of the world kind of being more willing to collaborate doing something it was not always just a question of survival or doing you know like bridging this this low time uh, but just an openness to collaborate with with everyone um and and that really brings me to the other question which which i wanted to ask um for zan really that do you think that you know this period especially you were out there you were chronicling this out there do you think you saw that there were new sorts of opportunities being created for uh, the arts and their livelihood um, do you, do you, did you see that you know younger people who wanted to express themselves in in one way or the other um, either through poetry or through photography or through painting um, somehow found a place um, you know in this sort of complex network of of exchanges that was happening and uh, do you, do you think people benefited from that I don't know if if Fozan is still online but if any of you want to address that Hanif I mean you you work with artists from across the board um and did you see new artists sort of come come and work with you during this time Yeah sorry sorry, uh, sorry. I I had a issue here so I I'm so sorry no problem. I lost I lost you somewhere in between uh you need to uh, Acha, you need to repeat the question for me to understand because I lost you somewhere. No problem. I think Hanif is already beginning to respond. What I was actually okay. asking is that you know, I mean, during this time you were out there photographing and you know, chronicling this entire time. Uh, did you think that this this sort of situation, you know, you know, you know, like a silver lining, created new opportunities for art practitioners um, and to express them? Okay, so let Hanif finish, and I'll I'll continue after that. 
I mean, this pandemic is actually here so that it can it can push all of us into this digital world, right? I mean, like we would have done this session uh, traditionally, but now we are all doing this, and it has pushed also the artist uh, onto this platform. And and you know, uh, somewhere the NFTs are also like becoming a bigger and bigger thing, and I think that's going to be a new ways of like looking at the art. Uh, um, so it has opened up, I think, a very different kind of uh, uh, avenues for each of us. Uh, it's just that one invisible thing has kind of changed all our lives in, and kind of like, you know, I think uh, not just art, but in all aspects, uh, it has it has affected and uh, opened uh, new avenues as well. Okay. Uh, uh, in my case, I would say it was the other way around, uh, meaning you know, with everybody with a mobile in hand as a photographer these days. But uh, since they couldn't step out, since they couldn't go out to shoot pictures, so it it kind of gave a lot more importance to professionals to give come back with images, you know. Otherwise, the value of image these days is nothing, you know, because everything they can do good pictures with their mobile. But for me, like since general pe people and general public couldn't step out, our pictures have a lot more value in that sense. And I saw a lot of photographers taking the opportunity to step out and do pictures. You know, like my students, I would encourage them to go around in the vicinity and do pictures, uh, which otherwise they wouldn't have done. So people with camera, with a uh, little more uh, guts would step out and do pictures. But uh, it, 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 in a sense, it didn't open up much opportunity, but it gave certainly the photographers who were doing professionally a lot of impetus, you know. <laughs> right. Uh, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. We do have a few interesting questions um, also from the audience. Um, well, here's a question from Pratap, um, who is asking actually a much more fundamental question. He says that, do we think we have cheated the migrant workers? We did not respect their sweat and service to the national building effort. Only the government have to self-satisfy against their support. But he strongly feels that these migrant workers were deprived. Indeed, indeed, they were. Um, and, and I wonder if, um, if some of you would like to comment on some of the other captures of what was happening. You know, if, if, are, are there other people who are chronicling this uh, that, that you observed and you'd like to mention uh, these migrant workers going back home? I can uh, uh, just mention uh, a very interesting film uh, called 1232 Kilometers, uh, which is playing on one of the streaming platforms. And I have just forgotten the name of the, the director who did a very interesting thing. He just followed uh, in his car with his camera, a group of four or five uh, migrant workers who are actually cycling home. Uh, and if I'm not wrong, from across from UP to Bihar, uh, over a distance of this uh, 12, 32 kilometers. And uh, I mean, I, I was uh, amazed at the kind of parallels that I could see with what I had written in my perspective sitting here in Bombay with what was actually happening on the, on, on the road, so to speak, you know, that uh, if one looks at, say, what I have written in poems and it might seem that all right you know reality gets enhanced and exaggerated and so on it was no such thing because exactly these things were happening including the fact that when people actually reached home yes. the doors were closed it is not that home was a welcoming kind of situation because when they reached home they were thrown into all sorts of quarantines you know where they had to spend another 15 20 days with extreme deprivation and very bad kind of circumstances. So these films actually brought out the reality of uh, what was happening uh, on the road. Well, uh, you know, I mean, this, there's another question from Shweta Rane, and this is um, very much sort of around this, uh, this whole idea of a pre-pandemic world and a post-pandemic world, which we still haven't reached. But, um, but do we think that the way in which we were creating works, the way our processes um, will or might undergo a fundamental change after this pandemic is over? Or do we think we're just going to come back to 
to what we were before. I mean, here at the museum, we are desperate to go back to um, to a physical sort of visit, and we quite believe that you know uh, this this physical experience is so crucial and fundamental that it will never be replaced by the digital. Uh, but does any of you feel differently, or or has it changed the process of how you work? So. Uh... I have an interesting take on that, uh, Joyati, and I'll explain this in my uh, area of work. So there's something which we are working on, and it's courtesy to what we have done virtually. So imagine if if I'm putting up a play uh, at any stage in Bombay, and it's a one-hour play, and it has three, four actors. One actor is actually American, and the scene is such that the actor who's sitting on his table on stage is making a video call. and he's talking to an american friend ideally in a play you won't show that person but what if we put up a screen behind and that american actor is sitting in new york city and he's also acting in a play which is staged in bombay but he's acting live so he's talking to this character on stage on a video call but we are also zooming that thing on the screen for the live audiences so that's a kind of mixture which we are trying to work on the kind of theater we are trying to create where we actually mix that virtual thing what we have learned into the physical aspect so i think you know i mean i think every one of us in our work we have learned something from those times the current times actually which we can maybe use in our future set of work so i firmly believe this everyone has learned something new does anybody else want to comment on their process or how they see that changing in the future or if it has changed well if not not that um i think one of the one of the great gifts of the pandemic is this whole thing about uncertainty you know you you do something with great planning and then the last moment everything changes and you're you have to reimagine um what what has that done to things like funding what has that done to things like financial planning for your work or even logistical planning for your work has i mean how has that that uncertainty sort of impacted you all and how are you all responding to that okay uh let me just uh, tell you about the scene in photography uh, <clears throat> uh generally what happens you do a lot of pictures and uh, i call it a you know digital death you know pitch because pictures never get out in the in the in the, in the open and they always lie in your hard disk and eventually they die digital death but uh, you know we, we always wanting somebody to you know give us uh, a fund where we can put out our images in the public you know so luckily i had uh, shir sagar apte foundation who agreed to bring out this book you know and uh, thanks to them i am able to now publish this book and which would possibly go out in the public otherwise it would have just lied in my hard disk you know and which had would have never ever seen the light of the day right thank you thank you is there anything you you want to tell possible funders of how to fund the arts in the future given this whole sense of uncertainty and i i know asad has appeared so it's it's time for us to all disappear but uh, but i have to ask you this question because um, i think it's a very fundamental question for some of us who or whose livelihood sort of depend on the arts in the manner it does okay you're all sorted with your finances i'm not going there <laughs> 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 but thank you thank you so much uh, i mean i think i think the sheer fact that we were able to see the sort of work um that has been happening during this time and they were challenging times but they were also immensely creative times so um and and i think this ripple will sort of stay with us for for the times to come um in in whatever capacity we do work in in the museum i think i think i have uh, the playful authority to say that it would be absolutely fantastic to collaborate with all of you um in the museum along with avid learning and the kalakura association because um i i think as a museum institution also we are in transition and if we don't welcome new work new thought from artists like yourselves uh, within our walls uh, we'd be quite dated very soon um so thank you again for being here uh, and thank you asad and over to you to wind up well thank you joyti for uh, so skillfully uh, anchoring this conversation and to our panel i mean you know to be honest you know when we were 
uh, we were curating the session. Uh, you know, we knew about Mustansa's book. We knew about Fauzan's new book, which was coming out. And we said, there's so many artists who've done such amazing work, despite the challenges, despite what not only creating great work but also being um, you know for the consumer like me uh, uh, you know it was great to have the arts around you to make sense of this weird time we lived in and i think the arts was one thing that kind of grounded us or, or gave us some hope um, you know and you know as we always we all agree 100 percent, the real thing can never substitute the online but online did help us and it is here to stay whether we like it or not and it's taken collaboration and 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 partnerships to a whole new level and that's that's i think the wonderful part of of that period and hopefully it shall continue and as we said avid we're going to have this hybrid model which is going to be uh, you know starting march onwards um but thank you so much uh, for being such a great panel thank you to uh, Joyti and uh, Mr. Mukherjee and the whole uh, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Vastu Sangrale team for partnering with us, Brinda and the Kalagora Association for continuing to partner with us on a, on a long term basis. And most, most uh, to our audiences who've been with us, you know, through this whole pandemic, I'm like, I, I always say, like, you know, the beauty of online is you have this, uh, you know, loyal fan base who's, who's, who's wanting to share in this uh, learning process with us um you know as i say in avid uh, learning never stops and we don't stop uh, so our next program is on next saturday we have a fantastic uh, uh, session a great scholar uh, talking about the sassoons and the global merchants we have um, uh, joseph sassoon in conversation with simin uh, patel and um, we have a, we have five other programs in march so stalk us on social media or check out our website but until then uh, you know stay safe stay happy and hopefully as we all open up our programming we'll see you back at the museum at, at in kalagora and at many of the avid programs and, and the, the opera, opera house have a wonderful evening and thank you very much once again to this lovely panel good night thank you